my boost by a mile an hour here. So that's to the floor. So I didn't get the first recording, but I got my boost by a mile an hour enabled. And I'm just gonna try to go to the floor immediately out of this light see what it does for traction and see how it adds boost because my wastegate's only four pounds. There's floor. To the floor. Boost. Or maybe just the road surface was bad or whatever, but from a second gear roll, it was, I was to the floor the whole time and it was making me anxious because it was hooking so well, I was waiting for it to like step out, but also it comes up on the converter and wants to spin, so it'll be interesting. Maybe I'll just like, I want it to be a little bit aggressive. Like I don't want to be smashing it. I want to be able to pedal it a little bit, but I was able to pedal that one great, like around 40, just, I let it erupt a little bit, but then I realized when it gains wheel speed, it gains boost. So then I pedaled quick and a uh, rocket ship happened. All right, we'll try this from almost a stop. It's a little bit too saucy in first, so I gotta three quarter it, but watch this. To the floor. All right, so let's go over how I set up boost by mile an hour and how I was making it work the way I was. So I have my take two file here, which means it's updated from what I did in the video. Now that we got the exciting stuff out of the way, you guys can leave. <laughs> People that want to see how that was done can watch now. So we'll go into, this is my regular boost control method where I just run a raw output. I configured another one to do boost by mile an hour. When I want to switch in between the two, I can enable or disable them and you know change the pin out. So what I'll show you and what I did was I do for an input trigger, I do I have to be over quarter throttle and it has to be close to the end of vacuum. So what happens here is it turns on as I get close to boost because it has a four port, what it's doing is cutting off the lower supply and adding to the top but it can only add to the top after it starts creating boost it's a catalyst it has to feed itself so you want to get a little bit of a jump on that but you don't want it turning on all the time wearing itself out right right so what I learned is this is my second take you can see here it says take two so that's take one it had a little bit too much power down low and on my four port boost controller 48 percent was like low 20s 21 pounds if I look at the data log from when I was smashing it on the street there it only comes up to about 17 pounds uh, it comes up to 12 too quickly and it comes up to approximately 17 pounds total and it definitely wants more uh, 17 pounds I, I don't know if I made a pull on 17 on 14 and a half it makes 725 ish and then on 21, it made 830. So it was a little bit too much below 40, 50 miles an hour, and then not enough up top, in my opinion. So what I did was I ramped it, I think 40% is 12 pounds. So what you want to do is, I don't think I'll ever be able to fully utilize first. I guess we're going to see, right? I'll just keep messing with this. But uh, if I can get first gear to do pretty good, that's another thing. So you floor this thing, and this commands the duty cycle that creates the amount of boost that's tolerable for your setup. And the one way you figure that out is by continually smashing it. And the other neat thing is, a lot of you may or may not realize, driving a 800-plus rear-wheel horsepower turbo car, once that turbo lights off, you can back way out of the gas pedal, and it just wants to keep going insane. Again, we'll, let's use the word catalyst 50 times today. The turbo 
it, it lights off and it becomes a catalyst and it just wants to go all in and you have to pedal back an all motor car you can pedal back half throttle it does a really good job of cutting the power back a turbo car half throttle is pretty much making full power you have to cut way back and then you're to a point where like you really killed power so what's neat about plotting it by mile per hour is making sure you can put the power down when you get there you know you can put down power in higher gear higher mile an hour so you automatically build that in and then the neat thing about doing it by throttle position is if you're spinning slightly or you think you're gonna spin different throttle positions correlate to different amounts of power so if you know this thing always spins when I'm coming out of first you can just half throttle first wait till it clicks into second early because your half throttle and the mile per hour tables are gonna shift early you can roll down in second and if it wants to spin you can roll out it'll lower the boost as you chop the throttle you don't have to chop it you can just pull back and it'll lower the boost and everything so you effectively get better pedal feel and you can see that in my one video there where it spins in second I pedal back and it, it hooks the tire fast because it's not waiting for me to nearly shut the throttle it's already controlling the boost it's already knocking the boost way back then the tire hooks it hits a low mile an hour and I can go right back to the floor and what happens instead of trying to return to 800 some rear wheel it, it starts off somewhere where it hooked up the tire like 50 and it goes back to 12 or 15 and then ramps back up again so all of that effectively is working all at the same time based off of how much you're pedaling it there's lots of ways to do this but I wanted to plot it in a simple way obviously so you can get crazy with this and change all sorts of things uh, the other thing is uh, the mile an hour tables again it's for Lady E it's shifted by the computer if you are half or three-quarter throttle and it's hooking well it'll short shift and it'll get into higher gear sooner and then you can go to the floor and then it'll pour the boost on when it gets there so it's neat to see all of that working where is one where it is working good should we look at a log quick this is the one where I pedaled you can see I actually took a big step out of it so right here I knew it would really trash first so I let it get into second I just kind of half or three quartered it here actually I 53 percented it that's pretty much half and I waited till it hit second once it was solidly in second here you can see I quickly rolled down to 100 percent throttle and it got to nine pounds and then if we look at my transmission it's on nine pounds it has the tire 45 61 70 it definitely spun away from it there a little bit of spin so it'd be nice if I could get the boost to not be 9 10 or whatever that soon maybe it just can't ever hold in second it's a whole uh it's a whole chess game isn't it is the road surface good enough is it too much power are you in enough gear ratio etc so it just erupted here to about 82 miles an hour and I pedaled real quick to 44 percent and you can see instead of boost just running away where it normally would the boost controller knocked itself down which you can see here let's get I don't have the right one in my boost so let's get this for you guys boost by mile an hour let's add it in there real quick and easy so boost by mile an hour here first gear top of first gear 24 percent not really doing much it's adding a tiny bit what are we at real boost wise 3 psi half throttle first gear short shifts before 4000 here I go to 77 percent and then we're at 36 percent boost control already 38 40 is right where it goes about 12 pounds it's just coming on too quick in second 9 10 11 12 13 I mean this thing really makes significant power over 10 pounds like I said it makes 725 rear wheel on 14 pounds incredible really low boost monster 
uh, it's funny how when you watch the videos there the low boost just seems like the, it seems like it's not moving but it's a 5500 pound truck so up here it hit about 15 pounds where it spun bad I lifted got back into it uh, right here it's in third gear it's in third and it's at 75 but that was spinning right here it hooked back up about 71 and then I put it to the floor and it hit nine pounds and where's my boost it is asking for about 42 percent right here after I rolled back in so 42 percent I think is roughly 40 makes 12 pounds I believe and then right here it starts ramping in like crazy again 45 it's already making 15 46 making 16.9 17 17 4 so 46 percent here is making 17 and a half pounds and uh, you can see how nicely it hooked up and just accelerated like crazy up top really nice so it's neat to see all of that working right so this is a more aggressive up top and a less aggressive down low table that I it has been raining and it has been ungodly hot and I've been too busy with other things to thrash this guy yet but I'm looking forward to it I'm gonna try this guy next and mess with a few other things but I feel like a solid boost by mile per hour table works best on a street vehicle scenario I've used it a bunch of times uh, you can see the truck is, in, in my opinion, it's pretty fast for a 5,500 plus pound, three quarter ton pickup with a r actual real throwaway cheap street tire on a 20 inch rim. Uh, I think it's doing pretty good. A little bit of ironing and massaging on this and you can find out what it really can get 90% traction with most of the time, even if it's a little lazy. Uh, you're gonna you know you're really gonna hand it to people if you want to that's the big thing so it'll be neat to try this out it seems like if it's in a higher gear the mid-range can't get enough in it if it's in a lower gear can't really use any of it that's a whole other point of it uh, some people might argue why not do boost by gear the issue with that is this transmission can shift really hard and when you shift something if you don't if you shift it soft what happens is you're gonna probably hurt the tranny if it shifts hard and it selects the minute it hits third gear it asks for a ton of boost that's a shock to the tire and a ton of additional horsepower just think about how that's gonna go when you're working on a traction oriented setup and what's nice about the boost by mile an hour is uh, if I'm in third, I have it set not to downshift aggressively because downshifting an 800 rear wheel horsepower turbo car is fruitless also. So you, after like 52 miles an hour, it will not downshift out of third. That's how I set up a lot of my turbo cars, trucks. I set them, I want the gear ratio to give me 50 miles an hour in first, 100 in second, and 150 or so in high gear, approximately. So I feel like that works best in a lot of things. Unless it's a super heavy, lower horsepower truck, you want a really tall, tall gear. You want a tall numerical, high numerical, like a 456 or something. You want a lot of gear. People think that's crazy, but a truck has a 30-inch tire, and if it weighs 6,000 pounds and makes 500 wheel, it's not going anywhere. You, you need the gearing. So what's nice about the mile-an-hour plot is even if you're in high gear if you had a boost by gear and you were in third and you hit it at 55 and it asks for 26 pounds in third gear you're probably not going to be able to use that so this way if you have to pedal it and it hits third and you smash it to the ground uh, your worst uh, you know this is a good boost ramp for ultimate traction and then if traction isn't there you short shifter into second and then put it to the floor and if that doesn't work, you pedal again, let it hit third, and then you put it to the floor. So by third, it's absolute. So what's nice about that is you have your options all built in. You could, I believe you could build a per gear 2D or 1D table. You could get something like this and you could build a ramp 
for each gear by mile an hour, but I feel like that's going to be hard to perfect. I feel like just you just lit, you just go half throttle and let it get into the next gear and then roll down. And if it's too much, you lift, let it shift the next gear and roll down again. Uh, you have those three choices for your first, second, or third gear traction mile an hour sweep. So if it can't hold it in second, you just try for third. And if you can put it all down and wish you had more, oh well, at least you're not spinning anymore. So I hope everybody enjoyed that quick boost by mile an hour. Uh, I mean, this obviously isn't perfect. It's just, it's something I've done before. Uh, normally what I would use is the built-in dialog, which does, this does dome only on Terminator. It's kind of annoying. I've discussed this a lot. It's not perfect. I really wish. They definitely are going to bring map target, which is incredible on a HP and a Dominator. They keep asking about it. People have voted for it. I'm sure they... I'm sure there's a gigantic firmware update and that's going in it. And if you guys think of why they're not releasing it, they're probably putting in other stuff they don't want you to see and they don't want to cater firmware just so you don't see something cool. So it'll eventually be here. It's coming. That'll be extremely nice. Everybody will enjoy that because then you can target by a mile an hour and then you can also do modulation which means anywhere between 50 and up it automatically chooses it interpolates the target boost and that's all really nice too it's basically the same thing i'm doing with one single output function right here same thing just this little table so if you guys have any questions about boost by mile an hour let me know uh something very simple like this works very good one thing we're going to do i should add what we're going to do with Mitch's car, my buddy Mitch has that Street Fox, we're going to put a really light spring in his wastegate and we're going to set up, he's putting Willwood brakes on it all the way around. So he's messing with his front assembly and what you can do is you can point a crank or camshaft position sensor or a Hall effect sensor or an all threaded VR or any one of these wheel speed sensors. He's going to put one on. And we're going to wire that. He has one spare input left, and we're going to hook it up as a mile an hour input to the front wheel. You want to do the front wheel if you can, because if the back's spinning, it'll wait till the front catches up to add power. In that case, you could do a, he'll have a track base setup, which is like an ultimate traction setup, which has a launch and everything else, and a time base boost, more than likely. And then he'll have his street tune, which is boost by mile an hour, which uh, works I love it on all these Holly cars, especially ADE. It's very easy. You get a free speed input right out of the transmission to plot stuff with. So we're going to do boost by front wheel speed with a TH400 Terminator Fox body coming up soon on Mitch's White Notch. You guys can check that stuff out too. I'll show you how to do all that. But hope you enjoyed. The crazy 5,500 pound truck really rolling. Uh, pretty wild. It definitely feels fast. It's incredible to have something that big that's that capable. So that uh, that big girl can definitely make most people look like an ass. For sure. It is blindingly fast for how big it is. You don't expect it. I think on the one log I did 0 to 132 in 14 seconds flat while spinning and while pedaling it so pretty incredible for how big it is and on the street with a crappy street tire so questions concerns let me know i'll try to answer them thank you bye